Hey everyone, um, I find myself in a, in a Cayman S, so I thought I'd do a review on that. But before we get started on that, I wanted to give you an update on the problems I'm having with my car. Um, Porsche Cars North America have reached out to me and they've taken back the, my car and they're looking at um, fixing it or um, buying it back from me or getting me a new car. So we've got great progress on that. And I wanted to thank everybody that supported me through that, uh, through that process so far and I'm hopeful of a, uh, of, a, of, a, of a good resolution to that problem pretty soon. If not, um, my Lemon Law filing is going to arbitration in a couple of weeks, so um, the people at the Connecticut um, Department of um, Consumer Affairs think they've got a very strong case there, so if not, the Lemon Law filing will solve that problem as well. But anyway, uh, enough about that. Uh, on with uh, the, the Cayman S, a uh, car that I really enjoy driving. It's, um, it's one of the best driver's cars in the, uh, in the Porsche range and um, I think it's one of the, the least appreciated models as well. Uh, you know, I find driving the Cayman S as much fun and sometimes more fun than driving uh, the Carrera S. Uh, it is a very uh, even weighted car, that is, when you push this car to the limit, you know, it will start to drift evenly, unlike the, the 911, which the, the rear end starts to come round earlier because it's tail heavy. Um, so it's a very forgiving car to drive and it's a lot of fun to drive as a sports car. Um, it really is a terrific little car. Um, that said, uh, it's, it's also only a, 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 two, a two seat car, so it has its limitations. So what we'll do is, um, I'll take it for a drive, uh, talk a little bit about how it performs uh, in comparison to a 911. Um, we'll take a look at the outside styling and some of the inside styling, some of the, the quirky bits about this particular model, um, and what it's like to live with a, a, a two-seat sports car, because while it only has two seats, this car has lots of storage space, so it's really not as bad as you might think. And then finally I'd like to wrap it up with a little bit of a uh, speculation as to why the Cayman just doesn't sell. You know, it's, um, it's the poorest selling model in the range and, and I find that to be quite odd and I've, I've got some ideas as to why that might be. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy this review and if you've got any questions put them in the, um, in the comments below. And once again, thanks everybody for your support. So on with the driving, and as I said before, I love driving the Cayman. It's such a responsive, predictable sports car to drive. What's it like compared to the 911? Well, I guess it's a bit like making out with your girlfriend's sister. A lot of it's the same, but there's enough differences there to make it exciting. This particular car has the six-speed manual transmission, um, which I like. Uh, I like this transmission more than the seven-speed transmission in the 911. The seven-speed uh, tends to be one gear too many for me, it, and it's a little clunkier. Um, this one's silky smooth. I grew up driving right-hand drive cars, so it still feels a little alien to me, but it's still a lovely gearbox to use. As for handling, this is where the Cayman really shines. You know exactly where the limits are. For me at least, the Cayman makes me feel like a better driver than I am because I know exactly how far I can push this car. Performance wise, uh, it's very similar to the, to the 911. Uh, maybe 90% um, of the performance of the 911 Carrera is. Uh, the engine while well, it's only 325 horsepower, uh, feels you know, almost as strong as the 400 horsepower because the car's a little smaller, a little bit more nimble. Uh, it makes for a very, very exciting drive. And on to the exterior styling. And this new 981 model really looks sharp to me. They've really done a great job. I think it's a real step up from the previous model, which I thought also looked good. To me, it looks a little bit like a shark. Um, I'm not sure that I would get it in this color. Um, this color makes it look a little bit like a, uh, a Ferrari California, if you ask me, which I guess I shouldn't say, but yeah, it's really is a 
beautiful car from the outside. Before we get onto the inside, I have to apologize. Uh, this car came from the dealer uh, in a disgusting state. Uh, it's like the men's room at a Denny's restaurant. Um, I cleaned the outside, but I just didn't get a chance to clean the inside before I did this review. So don't knock the car for being a bit untidy on the inside. That's my fault for not uh, getting time to detail it. The center console is exactly the same as the 911. Uh, a very simple, straightforward layout. I like it. The dash is what I consider the small car dash. It's shared between um, the Cayman, the Boxster and the new McCann. Uh, it's missing the two extra pods on either side, which isn't a big deal because that information can be replicated on the multifunction pod. Um, the only thing I find a little annoying is the fuel gauge moves up to the top of the multifunction pod and can sometimes disappear on some screens. There's a very shallow storage compartment uh, armrest, just like on the 911 with a 12 volt outlet inside it. And then up here behind the seats is a pretty decent sized shelf where I guess you could put your coats or some of your shopping or I don't know, your baby I guess. I don't know, whatever you people put on shelves this size. Because it's a two-seater car, there is a limit to how far back the seats will go or recline. Um, I'm six foot and with the seat as far back as it will go, I can just reach the steering wheel. So I guess this car is going to be big enough for all but the giants amongst us. Out the back is a little trunk situated behind the engine. Um, it's not quite big enough to fit a gorilla. Poor William, I think he hates doing these videos. Luckily, up the front is an even larger trunk, or frunk as they call them. And this one is a lot more capacious. It can easily fit a gorilla, maybe even two. So finally, let's uh, take a moment to talk about um, why doesn't the Cayman sell? Um, I hadn't really realized how poor the sales of the Cayman were until the other day. I was, I was in at a dealer and I was looking around a showroom floor which had 25, 30 cars on the floor and they only had one Cayman. And I asked one of the sales guys, how come you only have one Cayman on the floor? And he said, oh, you know, we normally have one or two, but we don't stock that many because they just don't sell. Um, and he's right, I looked into it. Um, it's the slowest selling model within the Porsche range by a considerable margin. Um, especially here in North America, it is a very, very slow selling car, just a trickle last year. Um, and that surprises me because it's such an excellent car and within the Porsche range, it's a bargain. Um, and I have three theories on this. Uh, the first one being, obviously, it's a two-seater car and that certainly rules it out for a lot of people, although I think most people that would buy this car would have it as a second car anyway, and being a two-seater car would be less of a problem. The second one, the second theory I have is, um, you know, it's, it's sibling, the, the Boxster. Um, how many cars can you think of that the convertible version of the model is cheaper than the hardtop? And that's certainly the case with the Cayman and the Boxster. Uh, and I'd be certainly tempted to get the Boxster so that I had the convertible for less money and so I'd say a lot of people would make that decision as well where you know, if you're going for a two-seater sports car you might as well have the convertible one as well. But mostly um, the real reason really is and it comes down to a, a comment that one of my colleagues made to me the other day when they saw me driving this car. They said, oh Nick I saw you driving that car. Is that the model that people that can't afford a 911 get? Um, and that comment kind of annoyed me because uh, it, shows, it shows what people that really aren't car people think about the Cayman. They think it's the, it, it's the downgrade, it's the, it's the model that for people that can't buy a 911 but still want the Porsche badge get. And, and I think it's an uneducated view, um, but it would annoy me. You know, if, I, if I'd spent 70 or 80 or $90,000 on a Cayman S and people said those things to me, I'd be very annoyed. And I think 
that is part of the reason why people don't buy Caymans is, um, is because of this perception that it is the, the lesser model in the range, uh, which didn't used to be the case back in the 944s and the, you know, the earlier model Porsches, the lower range, they sold very, very well. But this one, I think some people have the perception that it's the, the poor man's uh, 911, which is a shame because it's, uh, it's very much a, a fantastic car that stands up on its own. So anyway, that's my theory on it, and um, I certainly uh, think that anyone considering buying a Cayman S uh, should ignore those idiots and go ahead and buy one anyway. It is a, a fantastic sports car. Um, it, uh, it really stands up to all the other models, and, uh, and I really enjoy driving them. Um, so yeah, great model. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody.